From the Middle is a founding member of Odd Pods Media. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to episode number 255 of From the Middle. We are three middle-class guys living in the middle of America in the middle chapters of our lives with points of view somewhere in the middle. Instead of telling you how great this episode is this week, I'm going to just give you a few key words to let you know what we discuss. Check it out. We have a ton of fun. Light up charge cables. Eight hours for hot dogs. Houston Woods. Did nebulizers. Library. Lego. And all kinds of fishing tales. We hope you enjoy the episode. Share it with your worst enemies. <coughs> oh, for the love. Sorry. Just clearing my Mountain Dew hole. I got my phone hole clean today. That's where you keep it? You're so cerebral and you're so developed and evolved. Don't mind us. Dylan and I were just geeking out over the new pick a bit brick feature he was telling me about on Lego's website. So if you've been to a Lego retail store, you know that behind the cash register often is a very impressive wall of the same exact type of piece. And you can grab and fill a fill a little cup of I think two sizes they had like a small and a large. And then you just pay. Sure. By it. You can do the same thing on their website. Dylan's telling me. Yeah, now there are. Nobody knows enough that listens to this podcast to care or argue. But if you really just wanted to hunt for the best price, there's also websites like um, uh, Bricklink. Sure. You can go there. Or some people would maybe argue, well, if I if I sit there and fit each and every piece perfectly, I can jam more in and get more bricks for my money. Yes, probably. This is for like as an example. We were in the Lego store. We were doing the build of minifigs and my daughter found a boom box accessory for the minifig. It was awesome. It was like a perfectly 80s little boom box minifig. And I'm like, I've never seen that before. And so I just went to the pick a brick thing on their website. I found I searched for it. I found it. I added it to my order and it'll like sit there until I'm ready to actually shop and pay for it. Because, like, I don't need to go find and buy the set that it's in. I just want a boombox because I think it's awesome. Yeah, it's an, it's an awesome part. Uh, so, anyways, okay, it's a really cool feature and uh, makes me love Lego even more. So, it's just one more reason to uh, have fun there. Yeah, just what I need. Another reason to spend money. How are yep. you guys? It's good to see you. Uh a Good. lot's happened. A lot's happened since we were together last. It's been a yeah. big week, huh? It's been yeah. a big week. A lot going on. Tons of implications. Big so implications. many. <laughs> Do you have any idea how many implications? No idea. How are you? Guys? How many implications are there? So many, it's it'll make your head spin. A lot. Kendall, you shared a photo that I'm excited to hear a little bit more about. Yeah. Uh, can you can you tell us about this adventure? I you don't know, want to steal your thunder. I've been fishing with the kiddos for this is going on our third year now. And I've been so proud of them. We started in the backyard casting because I was like, no push buttons for my kids. We're 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 heading out the gate with open with open reels. And uh we got through all that, been taking them fishing out for a while, the boys more often than than Lydia. Um, entirely by her choice. And, but she's come a few times, especially that first year. And like in that first year, the boys each were catching fish. Um, Lydia had yet to catch anything. And, you know, there's been times where I've just been like, just, just wait. Like it's, it's going to happen. And when it happens, it changes. Things change when it happens. And wouldn't you know it, our first time out, first day of summer break, school's over on Friday. We're out there at 5.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. And and my baby girl got her first fish. Let's go. She was so excited. I was excited. Like, I was sitting there 
like working on the tangled mess of one of the boys is <laughs> first time of the year. We didn't practice in the yard or anything like that. I understand. So like, I'm, I'm sitting on a fence with him and Lydia like shouts over, I caught a fish. And, uh, and my first thought was like, how, how do you know it's a fish? <laughs> Maybe you're stuck on the bottom. I didn't say that. But I held for a couple minutes with that in my mind, not a couple, a couple seconds. And then, like, I'm watching her line. I'm like, sure enough, there's a fish on there. And so I run over. She reels it in. And she has it reeled in by the time I get to her. And then uh, I tell her to pull it up out of the water. She couldn't. And so I grabbed the line and pulled it up and took it off the hook. And she petted it, took a couple pictures. And uh, it was a great, great morning. Loved That's it. awesome. Nice Loved little everybody. bass, right? Yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. about a pounder. Yeah. Or so. And, uh, you know, I sent text messages to you guys, to Amy, to so special. the rest of my family. And it was, it was good. In what and order? I, were, were we first or? Amy was first. Oh, okay. It's fine. It was first. But, but you guys were right, right, right there. Right, right in behind. Okay. How did it matter? Yeah. It is good. I don't know how many of you have been fishing with your kids, but like for me, and I told them on the drive home, like I've caught a lot of fish and none of them are more exciting than watching your kids catch fish. Like it is, it is just better. Kids make it better. It's good. Love it. Dylan, we have to go to you here. Well, I didn't, I didn't, have my fishing license so i did not help my daughter fish however you went real quick we, real quick was that a okay. real real uh, <laughs> we were at houston woods over the weekend houston woods lodge it's one of ohio's eight great lodges and we were there and our daughter uh went fishing for the first time and caught her first fish uh as well very exciting and uh she had a lot of fun she was pretty good after that like she didn't need to do it a whole lot more <laughs> a lot like dad you know a lot like me but um i got it we got a picture of it she was great she got a little one and uh she had fun she had fun doing it Heck yeah. and she was duly grossed out by the worms she's a kid i get that and um yeah, it was nice. On top of a, a nice long weekend away at Houston Woods, it was a nice sort of, there we go. Went fishing for the first time and caught your first fish as well. So, fun, little, man. fun little unplanned tie-in to your story. Just I love out. it. I didn't know about this. Yeah, I just sent a picture. Uh, I just sent you one just oh, now. Okay. Okay. Uh, that way you could have it. Because <clears throat> so, I don't think I put it on social or anything. If I know you at all, and I think I know you fairly well, uh, I would be surprised to learn that you have a tackle box. So I did notice there was a tackle box in the photo. Tell me, is that yours? Tell me. <laughs> that is not my tackle box. No. Okay. Uh, we were not planning on fishing. We we met okay. family there. And um, only the only adult that had gotten officially gotten their fishing license was my wife's brother. Gotcha. Who had planned on going fishing, and obviously the kids are allowed to go too. So he had taken fishing supplies. Gotcha. But then we're like, a, "Hey, he's fishing. Let's go down and hang out with him and not fish with him while he's down there." Um, and so it was sort of like, a, "Hey, Finn, do you want to? Yeah, just have a have manage, a cast. Yeah, and it's yeah. this pole. You're fishing, so you go ahead and whatever." And uh, so, yeah, it was good. It was he had the supplies and they bought worms and stuff. So it made it pretty easy for me to just like, you know, enjoy and watch her fish and do that. So not my tackle box. You're right. That's accurate. That's OK, Dylan. Hey, you know what? I don't know who I'm prouder of. Finn or, or you. That's yeah. great that you were out there. Well, to be clear, I have a tackle box. It just has Lego parts. in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just use it for sorting other things. Do you have a Lego fishing pole? I wish. Man, that'd be cool. I could build one, I'm sure. Yeah. It's just a bunch of pieces stacked on top of each other, right? Uh, so nice time and nice plug for the uh, Lodges of Ohio. Um, you can tell it's old and it's been there for a while. 
but they've updated it in all the ways that are important. Mm. So like they have upkept, they have an indoor outdoor pool. The restaurant is nice. They have Wi-Fi everywhere. You have cable in your room. They've updated a lot of the rooms and, uh, but they're still hiking and fishing and boating and all those things that you can go to. So, um, yeah, it was a nice time. Nice uh, plug for Houston Woods. Go check out the lodges uh, around Ohio, depending on where you live. Well, it's it's one more uh, piece of evidence that summer is here. Uh, if you need another one, we just celebrated Memorial Day. So quick shout out uh, to the families of those who have given paid the ultimate price so we can enjoy our freedoms here in this country. Uh, it's not just a day for hot dogs and and uh hanging out with family but remembering those that have gone before to protect our freedoms so that's uh another piece of evidence that summer's here celebrating memorial day kind of the uh entry from school into the into summer what else is going on with you guys did you guys have a good memorial day get together with fam chill eat some good grub I grilled uh i grilled up chicken thighs once over the weekend and then again last night um <clears throat> which is delicious it's my favorite thing to grill chicken chicken quarters um or thighs whatever is cheaper uh that was that was good the pool the local pools opened so we uh we did that and uh i mean otherwise like we played outside and stuff when we could uh went to the pool yeah, that's about that. Was, that that pretty much covers it. We've we've eaten outside every night except for one mm-hmm. since uh, since school's been over. So that that's been fun. A couple stupid stupid hot days here in Ohio, and then like some really cold and uh, nippy days. It's got a. You it know. Was, we were sitting there at a baseball game tonight, and like getting chilly. And I am my super prepared fashion keep a rain jacket in my backpack and so my wife uh, took that from me <laughs> um but it was you know we, we brought scooters for the twins so that they don't have to be bored and so they're riding around they were probably warm enough because they were doing that kind of thing but yeah it was chilly sitting there how was the chili <laughs> it was, hey it was, it was uh extra long little cold so, yeah not ideal cool. <clears throat> speaking of houston woods i do have one little thing to nitpick on that is a question that i feel yeah. like it ties into something we've discussed long ago i don't remember what episode we talked about hotel stays and basically all the service is gone like it's by request only like you check in, that room is going to look the same for however <laughs> many days that you're there for better or for worse, right? Maybe you can request service. They do about half of the things that they used to do. The state lodges are no different. Everyone's using the, st- the same cost cutting measures. I, d- I understand that's not Houston Woods or any of the lodges specific problem. This isn't, this is all hotels. Anyways, I understand. I don't mind. And in fact, I do think it probably saves a lot of resources to not constantly be, you know, washing all kinds of towels and things. They did run out of pool towels, which I thought if that's a problem, you might want to put some laundry baskets out in areas where we can say like, hey, have some extra pool towels in your room, throw them in here and we'll make sure they get back out to pool area. Separate issue. So here's the question. All services request only if they do it at all. I notice uh, maybe it had been there the whole time. I don't think it had. I think service had slipped in right before the last day and it put an envelope. Long story short, a really nice long message thanking us for their stay with the person's name on it that served us while we were there, quote, saying you can put your tip here. For the for the the any service for any gratuity you might want to pass along to apparently doesn't matter the, the name of the person. Let's say Stacy. Stacy was your person that helped with your service while you were here during your stay. Leave any nice message, whatever. And I thought, mm, don't care for that. <laughs> um, uh, I cleaned up everything myself. And I feel like under the old model, under the old regimes, 
they would have come in daily and been cleaning everything, trash and towels and new soaps and shampoos and all of that stuff. None of that happens. Didn't use the coffee in the room. Didn't use the little notepads and pens. None of that stuff. Everything's in perfect order. Um, I probably wouldn't have tipped then, let alone now. And that feels a little presumptuous to be serviced by request only. We requested no service. And then there's a tip envelope in the room. Thoughts? Am I out of line for thinking no way? <laughs> like their pay, built in pay is to do the bare minimum of keep the room clean and maybe do service by request, which we did not ask for. Is that unreasonable that I looked, I turned my nose up at the tip envelope? It, it's not unreasonable. In fact, this whole time I've been listening to you thinking the only way you could have gotten that envelope, it was, if it was like, Stacy was your designated point of contact slash service person. And Stacy wasn't there when the envelopes went out. The envelopes ju just went out because that's standard protocol to like have the name of your point of contact person. And you got the envelope from someone else, not knowing that Stacy did or did not do anything for you during that's i didn't even think that that came from stacy because it would be so absurd for her to give that to you unless somebody else just did like she was their person for these series of rooms she probably did some stuff while they were here we don't know that for sure our system is antiquated because it's a state park and so i i'd be shocked if that actually came from stacy with the knowledge that she didn't do anything for your room yeah, I, I mean, I, my assumption is that it's just an automatic thing. Yeah. And even if it did come from Stacy, it's not like, oh, I bet you they'll, it's, she puts that in every room. She's probably told, like, it's okay to put this sure. in every room. Sure. And she probably, if it, even if it's handwritten, she probably like hand writes a hundred of them at a time at home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, and I'll add further detail. It's not all handwritten, it's a pre printed envelope with a line. And then okay. they write the name on the line. So yeah. I'm sure it's going out to every room. But I'm thinking everyone knows how to leave a tip, whether you leave an envelope or not. Mm -hmm. That just almost feels like <laughs> I it almost is like an it makes me not want a tip. <laughs> yeah. If I was even thinking about it, and then I saw that, I'd go, mm, no, nope. I don't feel like it. Nope. No, I don't want to do that. Nope. Nope. Uh, yeah. Because I'm thinking we didn't ask for any. Now, some people might stay there with kids and there's like poop diapers smeared down the wall and, you know, fruit punch spilled all over the furniture and the bed sheets. And, you know, somebody popped a pimple on the pillow and it's <laughs> everywhere. I can see somebody in there going, you know, Stacy's going to be in. <laughs> Why don't you put a 50 down <laughs> as like an apology? She's going to have to do it because we're certainly not picking up all those Gardetto pieces off the floor. You know what I mean? Mm. But no way coming out of our room was anything getting left. Sorry, Stacy. Uh, maybe, I, I maybe, maybe she even put it together. Oh, this is the room I've done nothing for since their arrival. Eh, what the heck? I'll th yeah. worst maybe. case scenario. Why not ask? <laughs> Why not ask? <laughs> Because if the bare minimum service is what you should still be tipped on, whew, uh, and it was fine. I'm, I'm not knocking that from like it wasn't clean. I just mean housekeeping, The it feels like the bare minimum requirements are like what they're doing now. Uh, if we had ordered room service every day, asked for extra towels every day, that clean our room every day, totally get it. Anyways, that's something if if anybody thinks that I'm way off base, I would love to hear from you. Uh if you think that I'm wrong and should have should have been nicer to Stacy. Um just wasn't happening. I saw the envelope and I sort of went, well, that's funny. It's no good. And uh I don't think I threw it in the trash, but I left it there. It was empty. Mhm. Mm Anyways, fun time. Yeah. Glad you had a Even good time. Good time. Even Midwest nice wouldn't tip in that situation. I don't that think tells so. You something. I don't think so either. I agree. Yeah. How about ah. you, Corey? What, how's your, what was your Memorial Day like? 
Uh, Memorial Day, uh, we went to a cookout at a uh, family's house about an hour and 15 minutes away. Um, some Memorial Days and Fourth of Julys, I like to ride the motorcycle up. So Sherry and the kids go in the van and then I ride the motorcycle because it, it feels like there's a lot of bikes are out. And um, why not? This day, though, was 60 whatever degrees with 20 mile an hour winds and overcast skies. <laughs> And at one point I'm riding straight into the wind. So uh, my Harley has the pegs that, you know, you put your feet on in a normal riding position. And then it has two riding pegs uh, for the a passenger to ride behind you. So these pegs are slightly behind. You can use those as a secondary place to put your feet. If you just get tired of being in the first position all the time, you can kind of lean forward a little more like a sport bike and then put your feet on those back pegs that are meant for the rider. If you following, yes, you can't, you can't shift from that position, obviously. But if you know you're in sixth gear and you're just holding the throttle at a constant position, you can just kind of get a change of. I wasn't doing it for a change of position. I was doing that to try to make myself as small as possible and just ride straight into 20 mile an hour winds, fighting it like this uh, for a good portion of the ride. Not a lot of fun. <laughs> but the ride back at 8 p.m. was beautiful because it had been overcast skies, sunset, the wind had died down. Beautiful ride back. But good time with family, um, good food, cornhole, sitting around a fire for parts of it um gave my my aunt krista hasn't hasn't ridden a motorcycle since she was a kid so i gave her a ride around indian lake and that was special time my cousin connor gave her daughter a ride and so there's two bikes with both of them on and kind of getting to ride for the first time in a long time so that was cool but uh yeah the last week and a half you guys i am doing way too much how much is he doing way too much in all areas of life in all areas of life <laughs> unless i'm in that like prep for vacation you gotta button up a lot at both the house and at work feels like you gotta work two to three times as hard to set yourself up to be able to enjoy vacation without getting pinged about different things having backups upon backups upon backups right Whew. and uh it's graduation party season we've got nephews graduating graduation party one night graduation ceremony the next day birthday party a different day worship team the next night volunteering one it's just way too much how much is he doing way too much <laughs> so uh, i hate the word busy but it's been a little it's been a little hectic but we're we're less than a week away now from our time in hawaii and so i have nothing to complain about right it's going to be amazing um do you find follow up question? Do you find uh, which? Well, let me let me s make a statement before uh, I ask this question. I mean this in a good way, and we both love our father very much. Do you find that right before a vacation, you get the most like become the most like our father? <laughs> preparing, <laughs> preparing. I mean, I'm like not even a piece of trash in the garbage can. We're going to put it all outside in the thing. I sped up my mowing schedule the two times before. So I didn't have to come back from vacation and like mow right away. It's like, make sure the thermostat is down. We're like triple checking locks and wiping off counters and tables. So there's not like, don't want any ants in here. You can't leave food on the table and the counters and the floor. Do you find it? <laughs> similar in yeah. that way? I have learned not that I think that any one personality profiling system is the answer or should define us, but there are aspects of one of those in particular that suggests that my personality type in a time of stress becomes very much like that. So the, the way that I naturally deal with stress is to try and button every possible thing up because I can't control so much of what's happening, but I can't <laughs> control these things. And that makes me feel like I'm uh, de-risking or, or de-stressing somehow if I can control <laughs> as many things as possible. Uh, yeah. But it's, uh, it's a good time. I do have something fun that I'm looking forward to that I know you guys will appreciate. Uh, so I got invited uh, by a fellow motorcycle rider, speaking of motorcycle riders, 
to go to a place called Hillbilly Hot Dogs in West Virginia. I don't know if you guys have ever been or have ever heard about it. It's a little hot dog stand that's in a trailer in the middle of nowhere in West Virginia. And they have like Dirty Franks like crazy toppings for hot dogs. Anyway, eight or nine bikers are all going to ride down. One of the riders doesn't feel super comfortable with highways. So we're going to take back roads, which means it's going to be about a four hour trip one way. So we're riding eight hours round trip for hot dogs. And I'm so excited about it. It's happening on Saturday. Something about riding in a convoy is so fun. And you guys heard my story about last time when my bike would start. We'll forget Mm -hmm. all about that. I'm going to charge my battery this time and not leave the lights on. But I'm so excited at how silly it kind of is to to be riding eight hours for hot dogs. It feels kind of awesome. So that's happening a couple of days before we leave. That sounds good. I'll have that. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, One of them's deep fried. It's called the hillbilly dog. Deep fried weenie, chili sauce, mustard and onions, deep fried Mm -hmm. hot dog. Uh, Do you know why they drive that far to go eat them other than the hot dogs are good? Yeah, it's just like a just riding a motor. The, the the point is to ride a motorcycle. No, you need four hours to fart and clear all of that out of your system. <laughs> oh, that's why. On an, yeah. on an, in an open air vehicle on your yeah. way. That's why. The I would motorcycle- argue that eating chili dogs uh, and then riding back makes the ride back a lot longer. If you know what I mean, and riskier. This is my Mark Pies theory. Well. <laughs> This is the just Mark don't, just don't be just don't be in the back of the convoy. <laughs> You'll be yeah, all right. You're just fine. So that's kind of fun. Riding with the destination is always fun. Riding with other riders is super fun. Um, I'm I'm it's kind of cool that we're taking the the scenic route and avoiding highways as much as possible. So we're just mm-hmm. like taking our sweet old time. Greg, a uh, friend of the show, uh, is gonna join. And uh I like the adventure and the challenge of it. I've never ridden so far uh in one in one trip. So I'm kind of curious to see how I hold up, how my dairy air holds up on the way down. I was going to say, I don't even ride a motorcycle. My butt hurts. Listen to you talk about it. <laughs> um, so there's the Both challenge. Hurts. There's the adventure. And this is all weather permitting, of course. But uh, I hope to come back with a pretty epic story uh, about a mediocre hot dog at a great ride. <laughs> yeah, sounds fun. That's a that's a long sandwich run. <laughs> that's a very <laughs> long sandwich run. Did I tell you guys the first follow up to the Mark Pies story? No, so we talk about that. No. I haven't even, so don't get too excited. So we're doing volunteering at an event at the kids kiddo school before it's over. Um, chit chatting with one of the other parents who is a local. They had moved to Columbus for a couple of years and then moved back to the area that we live in. And I knew that I wanted to ask about this Mark Pies, but I was trying to find a roundabout way of asking about it. <laughs> and I said. Do you, as if playing stupid a little bit, you know, one thing I haven't found since I moved here is a really good Asian restaurant, maybe. Do you know of any, do you know of any good Asian restaurants nearby, like in this area specifically? And I was going to eventually, because I'm assuming they're going to rattle off 10 other places. I was going to go, oh, what about the Mark Pies on such and such? And I kid you not, she looks at me and goes, you know, Mark Pies is pretty good. (laughs) <laughs> as the first thing that she said and if you don't know why i'm telling the story it's because the closest restaurant to my home is a mark pies and no one is ever there and i'm scared a little bit to eat there because no one is ever there and i'm not sure what the food quality is going to be like but the thing pushing me to eat there is the fact that when i do drive by i frequently see uh, well, not frequently. The last couple times I've seen our local city police department sitting in there eating. And my mm. theory is they wouldn't go eat there if the food was causing any kind of issues after the fact <laughs> because they're stuck riding around in cars. So it has to be OK if they're eating there. Otherwise, it just doesn't make sense. So the fact that this parent said right away, oh, Mark Pies is really good, means I actually have to go eat there now. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't have a choice. So hopefully the next update on Instagram is just a photo of like a bunch of containers of Mark Pies and I'm not dead. 
So uh, there's the follow up. Uh, hopefully, I'll I like follow up yeah. too with some delicious food. We'll and hopefully, your you. follow up uh, is pictures of a bunch of hot dogs and things that you tried. And um, hopefully, you don't have any issues after the fact either. Quick share. That sounds epic. And you still have to go get the actual scoop. But the more I'm researching this place, if that's the size of hot dogs, oh, oh. holy goodness. Uh, and this is the establishment. Uh, it's an old bus with, uh, okay. yeah, that crashed into a shack and they're like, well, shack. this is going to be pretty let's epic. Open a hot guys. dog stand. I'm going to need to vlog this situation. Look at this. This is West Virginia. So, um, I'm sure people have said like, Hey, I love what you've done with the place. And the <laughs> owners were like, no, this was all here. Listen, the, for those who are not on YouTube, it does look like an old bus crashed into an uh-huh. old shack and then a tornado. Uh, through a boat, a, a split console yeah. boat on top of uh-huh. the bus, yeah. and that is where the graffiti art hillbilly hot dog sign is it's painted. Pretty cool, it yeah, is. One, it looks like it looks like a biker kind of place. It looks one, like a biker. It's like if a hoarder opened a restaurant in an old trash heap, but mm-hmm. somehow they got the West Virginia department of like food and commerce to clear it all. They also yeah. have a wedding chapel that has a bus up in a tree. <laughs> so of awesome. course I have a lot of to learn. You they guys. Do. Uh, their, their most famous dish is a 15 inch, 15 inches of pure eaten pleasure. It's called the home wrecker. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. This is going to oh, be, Oh man. Okay. I can anyway. wait. I, love I want if you if you think about it and you have like earbuds in, um, take some take some memos of your thoughts as that's like working your way through its your system on your way home. Like how many times will you feel like you need to stop? Um, I've just this could be epic. I'm just really curious what this will do to you. I can't wait. All right. Well, there's so much more to learn about this place, and there's so much more to learn about what's been going on with us. And you will hear more about that when we hear from some of our friends in Odd Pods Media. We'll be right back. If you like fun, then you're going to love the Beard Out podcast. It's a podcast where we talk about two of the greatest things in the world, beer and Weird Al. And frankly, we talk more about Weird Al than anything because he's the gift that keeps on giving. So join us as we talk through Weird Al's career, what he means to us, and we have some very special guests on to discuss the magic. That is Alfred Matthew Yankovic. Weird Al, part of the Odd Pods Media Network. So, you know, the little um, microwavable mac and cheese, like the little you get the little four packs or whatever. So it's heating yeah. one of those up. Peel back, for, peel back the lid. Yeah, yeah. Peel back, pour water, stir, microwave, three and a half minutes. Uh, so making one of those for my daughter, that's what she requested for dinner with corn. So she wanted mac and cheese and then some corn. So I'm heating up the mac and cheese and I've pulled it out of the microwave. And typically what we'll do is it's so hot. We'll stir it, the cheese in, and then put it in the freezer for like five minutes just to cool it off really rapidly. And so she walks over as I'm about to stir in the cheese. And she said, here, I'll put it in the freezer and starts to grab it. I said, no, there's no cheese yet. And she said, oh, well, without the cheese, it's just mackin. <laughs> Completely straight face. Yeah. And then yeah. just walks away. And I. I thought it was, I had a very good laugh at the time. I thought that was great. That's, so, it's that's true. so good. It makes you wonder how this whole time, has she thought it's Mackin? Yeah. Like Mackinac Island, like Kendall's mm-hmm. hat. It's like Mackinac, Mackin cheese. So uh, she wants some Mackin, some cheese on her Mackin. So uh, I thought that was pretty good. Also revisiting a topic uh, from, I think last episode, maybe two, we were talking about, some of the most over the top food that you've ever eaten in the car. And I had a few people chime in on some things. Uh, and it, it seems to cement the rule that we came up with off the top of our heads that once you introduce a utensil, that's probably where you've lost the plot. It, yeah. That's that's probably where it's gone too far. Uh, one of the first responses uh, that we got was yogurt mixed with oatmeal in a bowl which did require a spoon. So, yep, I could see how that was over the top. And then somebody else said, 
uh, every time that I leave my parents' house, the only Panda Express within hundreds of miles of where I live now is like close to their house before I leave their house on the way. And it's like their guilty pleasure food. So they had the whole like three meat platter of Panda Express in the car, like three option rice noodles or whatever all you can get. That was what they were trying to eat in the car. Feels Uh, like a lot while driving. Feels like a lot while driving. So I'm guessing because this is hundreds of miles that this is like interstate driving probably with like the biggest portion of Panda that you could get. Right. That's a lot. That's rice a lot of, would be rice would definitely be a problem. I, don't, I can see if you're especially if you're by yourself, open the carton up on the passenger seat and you've got like big chunks of chicken. Yeah. And just, bone, you can just, you can just blindly chicken. stab. Yeah. But you're like, I could see that. Yeah. I could see that working. Yeah. Um, I don't see rice working out. You get a hunk of your leather seat every now and then, but at least you can pay attention to the road, right? Right. Uh, this this person's not asking, but here's my advice for next time you visit your parents. Because y- you know this is going to happen. This is your ritual. I'm here for it. Just bring those like containerized kid plastic separator things and so that you're not stabbing into styrofoam or in a takeout container. Like yeah. plan ahead, bring containers that suit this endeavor, enjoy yeah. it, still do yeah. it, just do it a little safer. And yeah. in a way, it's not about separating food, like your food can't touch, just that way you have some little walls to stab against and you can yeah. create yourself a little tray like Kendall did for his wife for Costco or something right. to right. like, to do it, to do it safely. I can't imagine if low main was involved. That's too slippy. That's like, right, a, a plastic fork with low main. No chance. Yeah, that's slippy long stockings. Can't have that. No good. So, okay. hey, res- thanks for thanks for those responses. That's great. Uh, love to hear from people what they're doing unsafely. So uh, that's good to know. Uh, I heard some for some people who got ready in the car, but I'm trying to remember if that was text or instant mm. messenger. Uh, Simon weighed in. Do you remember that, Dylan? Do you remember what format that was in? Anyway, oh. let's keep talking about right. something else while I look for that. <clears throat> Yeah, I have a few things we can talk about that are old technology that uh, I've been I've been pleasantly impressed by. I wanted to say surprised, but that didn't feel like enough. That's fine. That's enough. I shouldn't overindulge. I've been pleasantly surprised by old technology. Uh, Tell me old, more. Te- old technology that I've been pleasantly surprised by. We probably weren't fancy enough growing up to have owned one when we were kids. And I don't know what it's actually called, but I'm going to call it a denubulizer. And what I'm referring to is you get see you get a you get a nice shirt, really comfortable soft shirt. You're a bigger guy like me, and you wear it a few times, and you get all those little nubbins like under your armpits, the little balls mm. that like roll up, like maybe because your beard, like oh, yeah, yeah, and you get those, and you get the little <laughs> nubbins under your armpits, and you get them whatever. And it's really annoying because it can make a really nice shirt unwearable out in public or feel unwearable really quickly. And they make a little thing that's got like different speeds and different things that you just like rub across the shirt. And it just takes those little nubbins right off. Like it like shaves them off. It shaves them off. And but it doesn't cut the shirt. I had no idea. Apparently these have been around for a while. And my wife had bought one and she's like never used it. And I wear lots of T-shirts, so I kind of need it a lot. So I just stole it and put it into the drawer on my side of the bed. And I'm like, this thing's incredible. I wish I had known about them. I could have saved a lot of money on shirts over the years if I had known about denebulizers. So I don't know what they really are uh, called. You can probably Google search the thing that takes nubbins off shirts. You can probably Google that and figure out what it is. Takes balls. I don't, balls off shirts. I don't, I, maybe I want to see the infomercial for that. Got way too many nubs on your shirts. Boy, do we have the thing for you. We got the thing for you. And then here's what I was thinking. If I was like homage, because I know not enough guys know about these things. Did you say every homage? Single time, uh, yeah, homage, like the company homage that um, sells shirts. Sorry. Not everyone listening might know. There's a company called homage that sells really nice, comfortable, soft shirts. Ryan Reynolds just invested in homage, probably because he wants to make Wrexham shirts. Anyways, if I was a company like homage that made really nice shirts 
every time somebody put a t-shirt or hoodie in the their shopping cart online, I'd be like, do you want a denubulizer? You can get <laughs> add one now to your cart for $14.99. And it's going to like save you from having to buy more shirts all the time. So anyways, get yourself one of those. Um, again, no idea what they're really called. Second okay. one. Okay, yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. Do you have a question? Are well, we just- I, I found the thing. It ties to last episode and has to do with clothing. We were talking about how much how much oh. is too much getting ready in the car, but I don't want to. I okay, found we'll the comment. Back. Second thing. Uh, I know Kendall has been to his library lately because they just opened a new one not long ago and he was there. I ha- admit I have not been to a local library since we moved out of Greater Columbus. Columbus has a phenomenal library system. It's one of the top library systems in the country. We are no longer within the Columbus library system, whatever reach. So I didn't have that crazy high of expectations for our our local library, not knocking it. I just thought it's going to be a very standard library. Like when I grew up, there was like, maybe you were lucky if they had some good movies that were old and you could get some good books and maybe a few good movies and whatever. So we walk in to the branch that is closest to us and Finley had never been to this particular library. So we took her in and we said, you have some questions. Ask the nice librarian. She wanted to know how many books we could get. And I said, and you might want to ask her uh, how long you can keep them. And she asked and the girl at the front desk was awesome. She's like, you can get as many as you want. And then she asked how long she keep them. She said, keep them as long as you want. We There's like no restrictions at our library, apparently. She's like, as long as you bring them back, you take as many books as you can read and just bring them back when you're done. And so, like, that's awesome. So she's, like, telling us us about the summer reading program and pointing out all kinds of cool stuff. And, like, the more you read, you can win prizes. Super cool. So then I'm looking around this library while Finley's picking some books. And they have a section with PS5, PS4, Switch, Xbox games. And then there's a big CD section. And then they've got DVDs and Blu-rays. And I'm like, oh, these are all going to be like old. Like it's going to be like Steve Martin and Chris Farley movies. But then they've got a movie that like just came out on Netflix like a month ago. And like stuff that's like brand new MCU movies. And then I'm walking back into like the adult section. And they've got nice chairs everywhere. They've got a soda machine that takes Apple Pay. They've got a study room, tons of computers, and then I see a gaming room and they've got a PS5 hooked up to a TV with like a couch. And it's like, just go ask the front desk for the key and you can go and sit there and play video games. And I'm like, I can't imagine having this as a kid. It's right beside a school. If I was a parent who had to like leave work to go pick up my kid, I'd be like, you walk literally 20 feet from school to the library and you hang out there until I can get you after work. Because you can get yourself drinks, you can play video games, you can go read books. They had like little tables with like little things of toys that kids could play with. And I'm like, and cool toys, not crappy ones from the dollar store. And I don't remember any of that at the library growing up. So check out your local libraries because maybe they're awesome. And (laughs) I didn't know. So anyway, you're on fire tonight, man. The digitalizer. Uh, denebulizers and libraries might be way cooler. And I'm just thinking people complain about not having things to do. There's enough to do at my local library. You could let your kid go read in a corner for two hours while you're checking out magazines and listening to like the best music you can listen to and playing PS five. So I don't know what people are complaining about. There's plenty going on. That's awesome. That's wonderful. It has been holy cow, Dylan. And over the span of a week, you, you have, picked up uh, on the denebulizer yep. uh, revolution yes you Hold you went in. you went not fishing mm-hmm. and but uh, outside yeah but you, but you went outside when i was outside you were outside and i mean you, you watched your kid catch a fish yep and then you went to a library you left the house so many times so many times i'm doing so good this week and i'll have you know yeah. That even though I didn't have my fishing license, I use the heck out of the indoor and outdoor pools because I think I swam about five hours in two days. Nice. So uh, I did lots of swimming and burned a lot of calories. So that yeah. was cool. yeah. And more intel on Mark Pies. More um, intel on Mark Pies. Okay, now I need your throwback. Okay. 
Denubulizer. Hopefully you're subscribed to us on YouTube so you can get all the fun video content that we share uh, all the time on episodes. Go ahead. This was a uh, YouTube comment when we were talking about eating, getting ready in the car and eating in the car. Okay, so Mm -hmm. this is from uh, Simon and Laura. Simon listens, but this could be Laura commenting. You'll see when I read the comment. Quote, I keep an entire tube of toothpaste and toothbrush in the car. I often like to finish my cup of coffee slash caffeinated drink before brushing and will do so on my commute to work. Pretty normal. This is the one that was a little interesting. I have also changed my entire wardrobe and done a PTA bath, if you know, you know, with wet wipes in the car while driving. Wow. All of a sudden... All of a sudden, the Panda Express doesn't seem so complex. <laughs> now, is, is this the toothpaste that's like the quick that you said that like dissolves? Nope. Actual tube, full tube, mm. tube of toothpaste. Not the I have questions tube. about that alone. And then yeah, like uh-huh. more questions about the other things. Yeah. Go, go, Kendall. I need to talk. No, well, I need to talk to this person. Yeah. I think like uh, brushing can... your teeth. What do you, I can't brush my teeth without a, without a, a sink. Well, I, strike that. I can camp brush my teeth, but my sink is the ground in that case. And I have a giant bottle of water next to me. Like what are you're not one of these psychopaths who's swallowing toothpaste, are you? Are you spitting toothpaste into your coffee cup? And do you have something to rinse your mouth out with? Because that's disgusting if you don't. Um I also tend to gag when I brush my teeth in the mornings. I don't know if I'm the only one who does that. But you're going too far. Yeah, it's, I have lots. I I don't understand because I still brush my teeth like I'm six. And so I get toothpaste foam or all over my face. And so I don't know how I could clean myself up. I would look like I had spent too much time outside and was rabid if yeah. I tried to brush yeah. my teeth in the car. And I need a sink because I need to look like an adult again. Mm-hmm. So... I don't know how that works at all. And I really don't know how the whole second part works. <laughs> so I would need them to chime in. On well, that. Good, I'm going to, I'm going to start a text thread after this recording and we'll get some answers from uh, Simon and or Laura. Um, mm-hmm. So that's uh, exciting. Um, I got two small random things, Kendall. I don't know what you got in the queue. Oh, nothing. Oh. I got streaming stuff probably. Okay. That's... So, I don't get, I do get excited about products. This is a product that was not recommended by my Instagram algorithm or a celebrity. This is just something that I stumbled upon that's bringing me a lot of joy and it's very low cost. And I wanted to share it with you guys. Yeah. My Dylan and I stepdad was uh, enjoying a hotel stay somewhere where they actually gave you service. Um, But they neglected to thoroughly clean the room from the individuals before them. And so an item was left behind that my stepdad took, which was a charging cable. Oh, well, charging cables are a big deal in my household, especially the bricks, because uh, kids like to take the charging bricks. Anyway, this cable is special because it lights up. It's it. If you're watching on YouTube, it like. Lights make it look like it's going down yeah. the length of the cord, which is you especially watch handy. The power go into you your can phone. watch the power go into your phone, which is especially important for me because if you are familiar with the intro to this podcast, one of the things that I say is I got my phone hole cleaned today. Well, I have an iPhone 13. It's a few generations old and the phone hole needs cleaned in again, which means sometimes when I p- plug my charging cable in, I think it's charging, but it's not because it's not at the right angle or it has to be propped up against something. But now <laughs> with the denubulizer, sorry, with the... <laughs> light up it only lights up if it's actually charging so i can at a glance now see if my phone is actually charging instead of hoping that it's charging so that's been so fun you can get them on amazon it comes in four colors lime green red blue and purple and you can get them in three foot or six foot lengths and it's so fun it just it brings me joy it looks really cool in your car at night uh, i will also add um so that's one thing i'm excited about kendall I'm excited because your kids have been and you and your wife have been participating in martial arts. So 
I was at my men's group the other morning. We meet at seven in the morning at a local coffee shop twice a month. We had a new guy come. That new guy owns a martial arts studio in Delaware where he offers Brazilian jiu-jitsu for young kids starting at the age of nine. And I've been thinking about trying to see if Case would enjoy Brazilian jiu-jitsu because I've heard that it's one of the more the uh, utilize uh, uh, it's one of the more you can use it perhaps more than some of the other forms of martial arts. Practical. Uh, yeah, practical. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, and yeah. if you are going to get in a fight, because it's ground based fighting, if you are going to get in a fight, there's some stat like 80% of fights end up on the ground anyway. So if you learn how to grapple and wrestle, you're more suited for practical life situations that could occur. So anyway, he offers two weeks for free. So I'm trying to talk Case into starting Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And it'd be really cool if he sticks with it. Speaking of things we can do after school. So that's another thing. Okay, last question. Highly relevant to this podcast. We talk about comic book heroes, Marvel Cinematic Universe a lot. My father in law is cleaning out his house and he had a box of comics from the early 60s that he wanted to give to his. Uh, kids and grandkids that were interested. He probably had, without exaggeration, 250 comic books from the early 60s of all types. Disney, Hanna-Barbera. There was even some Bonanza comics. Um, a lot of superheroes, super, uh, mostly DC. So if you're a comic book geek, you need to help me out. This is the stack of comics I'm dealing with. Action comics, adventure comics, Superman, Lois Lane, um, Superboy. And so I, I don't know how to like assess the real value of these things. Obviously go to a comic shop, but there's like a whole grading system where a professional who's trained in these matters like looks at them and tells you where they rate on a scale from zero to 10. 10 being like mint condition, it's perfect. The pages are not yellowed at all. Zero being it's not even there because it's a pile of dust. Um, and then everything in between. But like, I just looked at one because so we did this whole thing at a graduation party where the nephews and my kids and me, we drew names out of a hat and we got to pick one at a time, the ones we were interested in. Just one of the ones I selected, a 30 year uh, anniversary edition of a Superman comic in mint condition, which these are not mint. They're good, but they're not mint. It was like $135 for one comic book. So I'm going to need somebody. So this I'm reaching out to the middlers. If you listen to this podcast, chances are you're a geek like us. What, a, what is a guy to do with, uh, with a big old stack of comics? I'm assuming started a comic book shop, but like, do I, hire somebody to grade these things? Do I just onesie and twosie it? Do I sell the whole stack to somebody who says, I'll give you whatever? What's the best approach here? What do you guys think just off the top of your heads? I had a pretty large baseball card collection at one point that I eventually just sold at a garage sale because I didn't feel like going through and looking for things. Yeah. And then pricing things. I just didn't know enough about it. But that's that's different. Like baseball cards, you're talking about thousands. Right. Versus the a stack that you could potentially go through and value these yourself. You could um, probably pull up eBay and just quickly search each title and go, all right, nine out of ten are worth less than five bucks, you know. Mm -hmm. uh versus you know every 10th one is worth 50 or more if it's in good condition yeah. yeah what kendall's saying is is a that's a whale of a problem when you've got thousands of cards i get that yeah. did somebody buy them from you what's that yeah yeah oh. Did he say that you had anything did or did no I, I no just made it, it was it, it was a lump sum it was a did you know 20 dollars take all of this yeah, interesting. The re that's a similar predicament somewhere between you two. So I got temporarily as a kid, I was into Mage Knight. Um, similar to Hero Clicks. It's a toy, little action figures that are on a dial, and the dial turns and the dial reveals stats. And that's how you make the gameplay. And I thought, well, I could just, you know, 
try to throw these on eBay. But then I found a list that's like, oh, if you have some of the original, which I bought it right when it came out, this one character is worth $90. And I'm like, I didn't find it in the bin, but I've got hundreds, and I'm pretty sure I remember the name of that character. So it's like, I might need to go through these Mage Knight guys and figure out, because they've been sitting in a bin for 20 years. You know, I might need to figure out if some of this is worth going through. So to answer your question, I don't know because I haven't found any answers either. But you have far less of something. Yeah. So like if you're not on YouTube, some of these on eBay, hundreds of dollars for some of these little characters uh, is what they're going for. And I have a I have several hundred in a bucket um, that I had collected. And, you know, so it's like, what do I do? You know, try, you think, I, I know I, I know I can find a, a game shop that sells them, but or, you know, that people play with them. But then I got to figure out what's worth what and what to charge for it. And yeah, this is the classic. What's your time worth and how much research do you want to do to, to yep. go through it? Yeah. Uh, and this is why people love garage sales, because they're a geek about one thing. They might be a mage night collector and they know if I find this. And somebody's like, it's in a bin for 10 cents, but they know it's worth 295. Our dad has said this about the 12 inch GI Joe figures from the sixties off. And he's like, they don't know what they're sitting on. Cause they just don't know. And they're like, ah, these are some dolls from my uncle. And then it's like, this guy alone is worth $75. So let me, let me add the mental debate that I'm having. Let me add to your problem. Uh, <laughs> because in my mind, I'm going, a couple of these Mage Knight are worth a couple hundred dollars. And what Lego set does that get me next? <laughs> mm. That's what that's what my brain. Uh, I want a little gaming PC to run Age of Empires on. I only need three or four hundred bucks to do that. And if I can get it from selling some Mage Knight, I don't even I'm not out anything, you know. Uh, so there's my dilemma. It's like I could if I'm willing to take the time. Final question. Do you go back to your father in law and say, I got $428 from that stack of comics that we divided amongst five people. Thanks. <laughs> Do you get him a little $50 gift card to his favorite restaurant? <laughs> that seems like it. I Maybe. Did he have, did he say anything like you guys can sell these if you want? I don't care. Or is he hoping that you keep them? No, I, no, I think it was like, whatever you want to do with them. I just want them out of the house. Okay. He'd probably like to know. It's probably like a, like there's a, a tradition in some families where when a grandparent says the sends the grandchild fifty dollars, it's like, tell us what you got with the fifty dollars. We just want to know. We just want to know what you ended up spending our gift the the gift of our money on. We you don't have to sure. tell us, but it's like a fun. If it contributed to a new pair of sneakers or a new video game, that'd be fun for us to know. You don't have to. It's it's your gift. I mean, okay. imagine you were like, hey, I was able to get two new sets of Jordans uh, from those comics. And here's a $50 gift card to your favorite restaurant. There you go. You know, I think that it seems nice. It yeah. like a nice, nice yeah. So I'm excited to see because, like I said, some of these are, yeah, uh, might be worth some. It's like a so, pretty good age for comics. If you know anything about comics or Mage Knight, let us know. Let uh, us know. Love to hear from because those about stories it. sometimes go the other way. We had, uh, I think, like Kendall to your baseball card example. Like baseball cards, especially in the '90s, were overproduced. Like mm -hmm. the '90s tops. Like my dad was collecting at that time, and his goal was to collect every card of a series in a team, and like the numbers on the card, like get every chronological number and i took that whole box to a, a trusted shop and they're like yeah it's, it's, there's nothing there's nothing in here you know like yeah. you don't understand this is multiple three ring binders full of thoughtfully organized 90s tops cards and he's like yeah it's just there's it's there's they were so popular in the <laughs> 90s that you're right they were just way way overproduced and nothing was rare in the 90s yeah. You had to go old yeah. if you were collecting in the 90s and wanted something worthwhile. Yeah. yeah. So it, it works that way sometimes, too. So anyway, fun times. Thought you guys would have some fun with that. But seriously, if you're listening and you know the best way to get uh, honest uh, value assessment on a stack of comics from the early 60s, let a dude know and go buy yourself a light up cable because this is fun. <laughs> that is fun.
Okay. That's all yeah, I got. I'm tapped out. I've been streaming stuff, but I forget what it is right now. <laughs> so, uh, Kendall, I, I know you've got streaming stuff. Word up. So uh, Back to the Future started introducing the kids to Back to the Future. Great series. Um, we're about halfway through the first one at the moment, which is which is great. And uh, that is fancy. I still don't know how to do that. Uh, make hearts come out of your heart hands. That's fun. Do it again. Dude, there it is. It's <laughs> magic. Um, it's fun. Hey, speaking of magic, I've been teaching my kids uh, some some magic tricks, card tricks. That's fun. They think it's obnoxious. I mean, I kind of make them do it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get mine to do it. That's my uh, magic. Yeah. Sorry, Kendall. You're trying to tell. No, you're good. And, uh, you know, I have watched a very large portion of the Eras Tour, Taylor Swift version, which I don't know. It's called when you when you're watching, it says the Eras Tour in parentheses, subtitle Taylor's version. And I don't know what that means. Are there multiple versions of this out there that you can watch? I think I know. I think I know. Can I give you a most likely answer? Yeah. So Taylor Swift had made a bunch of albums. Yeah. She didn't own the album, so she went back and re-released the albums with some updates and changes, and they're all called Taylor's version because now she actually owns the rights to her own music. So there's like, I don't know the name of whatever, My Story, and then My Story, Taylor's version. The first non-Taylor's version is what's owned by her original record company or whatever. Okay. Um. So my guess is it's just kind of a nod to that. Okay. It's, it's like the fans know to look for the Taylor's version. Right. So there's not two, there's not two concert movies out there to watch. It's just the know. one and the Taylor's version subtitle is a nod to what she did on the business end for her albums. That's my guess. The Swifties, that makes, can, that makes the Swifties can come in and applaud my explanation or swiftly cut me down on social media, whatever yeah. they want to do. But I, you know, I'm enjoying that way more than i thought i was going to yeah um which has actually been kind of fun and eye-opening uh i even have my favorite era apparently so so that's that's always good um do you want to share or do you want to keep that to yourself you know i don't want to know the name of it i can tell you that in the uh in the concert it's the theme where she is She's wearing a yellow dress and she is there's like foresty kind of fantasy background all around her the whole time. Uh she plays a piano that's covered in live moss. Um her her microphone looks like a stick, like a piece that has like wood grain. Just pretty cool. And so of all the eras, that was my uh, That's the one. That was my favorite one. Her nature era. Yeah, the nature era. I also kind of think it's funny that like she's had a 17 year career and uh, she's considering that eras that's enough to have eras. And I'm like, no, I like, I, I saw an era oriented concert from rush that makes sense that rush has an era oriented concert. Frank Sinatra um, could have had an eras. Yes. Yes. Taylor setup. Swift. 17 years is not enough to break up into a four hour long different eras basically each album is considered an era i'm like an, an era has got to be more than than you know 10 months that's that's not an era but well, hey whatever an army of fans and over billion dollar net worth disagrees with you so I, indeed and like i said i'm not not enjoying it yeah yeah so, here's a quick uh, taylor swift story i have a friend uh, a single mom whose daughter is obsessed and just got back yesterday from taking her daughter to see Taylor Swift in Portugal because they couldn't get tickets when tickets dropped here in the States because of all the crazy fees and bots. And apparently in Portugal, there's way less fees, way less surcharges and way less bots. And not only could they get tickets, she got her daughter front row tickets to see taylor swift in portugal now you gotta go to portugal to go see her but just i was following along they were sharing videos on social media i was 
not a huge Taylor Swift fan, but I could see how much her daughter was enjoying being front row Taylor Swift, an opportunity that she would not have gotten here in the States. So it's like trade-offs. That is wow. wild. Can you imagine? That's like, crazy. So that's like somebody did the math on, I don't know if it was Disney World or Disneyland, but they said you can go to Tokyo Disney because their prices are capped at like $69 a day. So if you get really good flight tickets, you can go to Tokyo and go to Tokyo Disney cheaper than you can go to like Disneyland or World here because the tickets and the food cost so much more. Numbers game. Uh, and have a comparable experience. Wild. Uh, I don't have a lot of things I've been watching because I've been outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> but I have things I plan on watching, and maybe you'll watch along. Ooh. The Acolyte uh, new Star Wars live action show is about to drop on Disney+. Plus. I think Dune 2 just hit HBO. I'm excited to watch Dune. Mm. Uh, I have a feeling there's going to be there's a new show on Netflix. I think I'm going to like it called Tires. It's got that dude, uh, the comedian. Jane Gillis. Yeah, Shane Gillis, Shane Gillis is in and it. Stavros Halkius is in it. And there's there's some other people. I have a feeling I'm gonna like tires, so I'm throwing that out there now. I think yeah. I meant to finish Curb, Curb Your Enthusiasm, the 12th season. That was great. Uh wrapped up that whole show. So I have things I will be watching. Uh, and I need to watch it before July because once that happens, uh things will shut down in my awesome. house. So uh that's it. That's what I got. Oh, one quick story. The same Jurassic Park sit in the video game arcade style shoot game that was uh, has been mm-hmm. in Houston Woods for 20 years was there. Finley wanted to play. I realized very quickly that's basically shoot 'em up dinosaur horror. So she can probably play any game, video game she wants now because she's played that. <laughs> but anyways, uh, trying to explain like, so you want to try to shoot like interrupts just to say, just shoot everything. <laughs> Had the time of her life uh, playing that game. It was a lot of fun, but yeah, I'm like, Oh, I, she can pretty much play any game now after. Cause like you go very quickly, you go like underground into dark Jurassic park, like base and like velociraptors are leaping out of the dark at you. And she was fine. So I'm like, man, oh. um, ripping fish out of the water and mowing over dinosaurs yeah. with, with and while she eats guns. mac and <laughs> yeah. know, time of her life you know uh, a whole we we decided to dump all of our snacks from the snack bag into a drawer in the hotel uh dresser so there was like a whole snack drawer she could just open like it was you know richie rich and there's like all this candy and food and muffins and stuff she had yeah time of her life she had a good time anyways i thought that was funny just shoot everything <laughs> I, I say this time and time again, but one of the reasons I'm so glad that we still do this podcast is just to just to memorialize experiences like that with our families and kids and be able to come back and remember some of those funny things that they said. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for some mackin', some dinosaur hunting, and uh, uh, it's time for me to go. So this has been fun. We hope you've enjoyed. Thank you to our sponsors, Artius Man, who make amazing all-natural men's grooming products, mainly for your facial hair. Go check them out at artiusman.com. That's A-R-T-I-U-S-M-A-N.com. Use promo code THE MIDDLE. That's all one word, no spaces, all caps. THE MIDDLE at checkout once you fill your card up with all kind of goodness. Uh, and you'll get 25% off of your first order. It helps us. It helps them. It helps you. Win, win, win. That's good in my world. Dylan's doing all the hand gestures on Zoom. Uh, it's one of the well, reasons you need to check us out. Yeah. It's one of the reasons you need to check us out on YouTube. Uh, as Dylan says, subscribe, hit the dinghy bell so that you get notifications, comment. It helps the algorithm. We really appreciate it. And we are that much closer to finally doing the Hot Ones Challenge betwixt the three of us. I imagine it'll happen this summer when I come back from Hawaii. And we will do that and we will film it and it'll be awesome. And the way that you can contribute to that is to fill our tip jar with all kind of monies. <laughs> uh, links on how to do that are in the link tree below. We would greatly appreciate it. But more than money, we just want your comments and your interactions and your questions and your thoughts. So please, weigh in, chime in, as some of the middlers have with this episode and the topics we discussed last week. It's so much more fun that way. It's interactive. You get more out of it. We shout you out on the show. It's all kind of fun times. You guys are awesome. We'll see you next Wednesday morning when episodes drop on all of the streaming platforms and where you find your YouTubes and in your podcasts. Enjoy. Bye.